snowball into uh, um, to, to what uh, what ended up happening. So uh, I told the team, you know, we got to shower up, get on the plane, head back, and go to work tomorrow. Okay, I apologize if you address this when you first got in here. I was just saying later. Uh, did, did you sense a uh, quote unquote bedlam let down? No, I really did. We we practiced average on Tuesday, and, but we practiced good on Wednesday. I mean, I I don't know. I think we got our coach. I think they made the 50 50 play. What were you looking at Ollie and his performance? Was so something that you see that they slowed him down? And you got kind of picked up on that, on that close interception? I don't think we blocked very good. Uh, I don't think he had a lot of, lot of places to run the ball. I mean, I would have to watch. give them credit, really. I think they did a good job. I think they had a really good plan on both sides of the ball that made um, calls that more so than necessarily us. Uh, but uh, it didn't look like the creases were there that we might have had the last month. Looking at the, the three interceptions were obviously big moment of killers. Uh, you know, look, it, a lot of it looks like just kind of some unfortunate stuff on your end because they all was that kind of what you saw? Yeah, a couple of them were, were, I thought, good throws, and it just didn't happen. And, uh, it just ended up being kind of a perfect storm there. Uh, and you know, we're coming back and going down inside the 30, and we get an interception. And, um, you know, even coming out of the half, we score, and then we get a turnover, we got a chance to score again, and then you know, it doesn't work out for us. So, One of them, maybe one and a half, could be somewhat justified. The other one's a field goal, I think. But you know, I just have to look at it. You said who uses that in the box. Uh, you're able to do something about it. They clearly stacked the box today. You didn't, weren't able to do anything about it Wednesday. Well, one of the, the, the positions weren't real favorable for us to do something about it once it started happening. I mean, the other points were thrown around a little bit. Uh, and so that, that hurt us at that point in time. Once we got in that. I guess there was a sideline report that y'all like didn't have all your rain gear or something. I don't know how much stock did you put into to that or what the rain did to to change your guys' plan. I guess there was a sideline report that you guys didn't have all your rain gear. Um, I, I don't know if that that's even true or not, but yeah, apparently. Oh, I don't even know what rain gear is. Honestly, I don't, okay. I don't even know what they were. Maybe they're talking about for us. I don't know. Like, I don't. We, we don't put the. Y'all weren't missing anything, though, were you? I don't know. We didn't, we didn't miss the coaches. We didn't coach very good. Not, not right. okay. I don't really think about that. What effect did the conditions have on the game? Because the rain seemed to come really quickly there in the second well, they, the game. we got behind by a few scores, and we needed to we needed to move the ball somehow or bring the ball downfield. We needed to, for the second quarter, we couldn't throw the ball. So, but they had the same issue. They just had the benefit. Made some pretty tricky plays that we didn't prepare for. When we needed to play some catch up, did things that we've done in the past, and conditions weren't very favorable, so I'm not going to say they were. But that's just the way it is. Did you say that you got Coach Hood that game? Um, I think scheme wise, we got. I think, I think they had better schemes versus our defense, and I think their defense versus our offense, I think they got coached us. Now, I'll have to watch the tape to be fair, but I think just, you know, my job is to watch and make adjustments during the See how things go, and, and have conversations with the staff and both sides of the ball. And just my judgment from watching them from the sideline is that they were better prepared than we were for this game. Mike, you mentioned that a, a couple times throughout the blog. Does it concern you that you know, there's a lot of times that hasn't been out coached in that team? Well, we've been pretty good the last six weeks, so I think you got to you understand that um, coaches have schemes going in games, and sometimes those. Sometimes players play better and they play better than we did and so on and so forth. We would like to say that we want to out coach everybody 12 times a year. It's probably not going to happen. Um, I've been doing this a long time. There's times.
times that when we get home and watch the paper, like, oh, that's just not looking. Those, that just wasn't very good schools in context of this. Or we underestimated that they could do this. Um, and that happens. That's just coaching, right? I mean, that's just uh, part of it. And in, in this league, and in college football now, with the things going on, the parity is there. Like, every week, if you're just not so much better than the other team, that if you're a concept star, it's good. And if they, if they play better than you, you can't just overcome that. You know, most of the teams in this league are all about the same. And um, so my honest opinion is, is that they coach better than us in this game. And then on the 50-50 plays, which are, you know, passes down the side, where we, we have a chance or they have a chance, both sides of the ball. Or we have a chance to break the tackle and they have a chance to tackle us or vice versa. I thought that made more 50-50 plays than We had somebody right there. The deep balls that they hit, I think they hit about three of them. Right? Well, the first play of the game, he was right on him, and I think when I think there were four, but the coverage wasn't bad. Now, the, the one offsides where they threw it up in court, and then uh, you know, the kid came came back and got the ball. I mean, that that happens sometimes. But the other balls that were 50-50 balls. Because it's hard to tell from where I am. Um, again, I talk to them, to, to them, and, and understand what happened. But uh, you know, it's a little confusing. It's a little bit. Uh, it's hard to understand. Is the guard center work up, and then the nose got to be in his cap, and the back got to be back over. And so, you know, whether they got pushed to the side or or got squeezed back inside, it's kind of complicated. But I just have to put them on the table. Like, is there anything you can take away from this game, or is it just kind of a throwaway? No, no, we don't throw, we don't throw them away. We, we, we have to learn from this. Uh, this is a, this team is going to be a, a good football team in this conference. They're located in, a, in an area where they can drive and get you know, about a three or four hour drive and probably just put it off. So um, they're, I think they're home against about 7,000. So this is going to be a good school in this conference. So we need to learn from this. Last week about, about the importance of moving forward after a big emotional win. Now you've got a, a really tough loss. Is that different? The same? More challenging? It's the same. You know, it's, and, it's, and that's not really coaches talk. That's every week. You know, I shared with you. I said, you know, last week we were riding high and uh, swear about all your emotions. And I said, now your challenge is to face adversity and face um, the thing, face the facts and the things that don't go well. Coaches and players. And then you have to move forward. There's nothing we can do about this. that we're playing in this league are pretty equal to us. So we got to do that the best way we can. That's true. The way the game starts, uh, score that many of these shots that they uh, were you started moving a little bit. They both moved a little bit, bit in the pick. It's hard to believe that you were ready to play. I mean, it looks like you weren't ready to play. Um, Emotionally. You know, I can't. All I can do is go off. Answer anyway, other than uh, you know, because you have it's going both ways. Like they scored, but we went right down the field. We we're rolling pretty good, and then we bumped. So like, did it, did it, did it fumble? Does that mean we're not ready to play? Or they got a good hit. I haven't seen it. Then the other time, we're going right down the field, we're doing interception on the twelve yard line or something, right? Pass off the helmet. So <clears throat> I don't think it would be fair for me to say we weren't ready. We were ready up until those things happened. The emotional side of it, all I can go off of is what I know from practice and then walking into the hotel and stuff yesterday and the before the game. I, I don't think that, I just don't think there was an emotional hangover. I just think what I said earlier had more to do with the mental hangover. You were worried about an emotional hangover Monday. So, whatever you were planning to do, you 
feel like that got through and it turned out what you were hoping it would when maybe this came well. Just like what we talked about. You know, the emotional side of how it affected the game, there could be a debate one way or the other. And I don't know that anybody can win the debate. But whatever, it didn't get accomplished. But I'm going to go back to what I said when I started this. I think we got outnumbered. So the emotional side of that. Give them credit, I guess, what I'm saying is what they did do. That's the positive part of this. It's like it's not college. You know, he gets frustrated a lot. He got a little bit. He, he, he got frustrated. He got frustrated, frustrated a little bit. But he does that a lot. He always does. Um, he's very animated, very emotional young man. Um, when things are going good, he does that. Um, but the team did a good job of uh, handling. They, they didn't lose their composure. Thank you.